So as you can see, the garden's doing great. The vines, the squash are starting to really climb up this trellis, so they are doing exceptional. But I did encounter my first problem that I was worried might happen. I came across a squash bug in my squash plant. Now, hasn't done any damage yet. Um, I immediately plucked him off and fed him to the chickens, so he's gone. But I do want to take the time to try and see how I can deter these pests from getting into my garden, whether they're squash bugs, cabbage worms, and things of the sort. And I want to do it naturally and organically. So I'm going to show you a few tricks I use to help deter pests in my garden. We've got some lovely fungus growing in the garden. I don't have any problems with that because that means that our soil is healthy and there's right moisture. So the main way that we are taking the steps to avoid pests in our garden is that we are basically utilizing the benefits of companion planting. And what companion planting is, is where you plant two plants together that benefit that benefit, oh my gosh, why can't I English? I can't English. That benefit each other, so to speak. So this is um, a, a pair of companion plants that I grew together successfully in my last garden and I had very minimal pest problem. I, 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 like, there was very, very light, a couple bites here or there, but it was very minimal pest. Um, I need to plant more of them, but I have a row of cabbage here. And as you can see, I planted onions. I intersewed onions into my cabbages. Now this is not as dense. I want to have a full row of onions um, thickly on both sides. And so basically the onions will grow tall and then by the time the cabbages leaf out, the onions will be past the leaves. Wow, I said. And as the cabbages grow in full and their leaves get big, the, ca the, the, the idea is that the onions, the tops will be past the cabbage and the cabbages won't shade them and kill them. They'll actually help protect the bulb from weeds. And at the same time, the onions give off a smell that a lot of pests don't like. So this is kind of a bonus experiment. Um, we planted bunching onions um, on this side. I'm actually about, I've actually got a bunch of bunching onions started. I'm about to plant a whole nother row. It's gonna be a very thick, dense row of bunching onions right up against the row of cabbage and then on this side I actually tried out planting bulbing onions and I don't know if you can see but there's a tiny little bit of green top coming in those are starting to come in right now the ducks are putting in their two cents but that is one of the big ways that I am growing cabbage organically and they're not getting taken over by cabbage worms so we'll see how this experiment progresses this I, I might have just been lucky that one year but I had heads of beautiful cabbage and I'll show some video footage over over this from my first from my uh, winter garden of 2018 where I had successfully grown cabbage organically no pesticides I didn't even use BT and I simply just planted onions with them so we shall see how that goes and I'll keep, I'll keep you guys updated we're doing a weekly garden update so keep an eye out for those weekly garden updates and uh, I'll keep you guys updated so another companion plant that we are utilizing, you'll see this tiny little seedling. And uh, if, you, if you, you, you may recognize it immediately if you know what it is. Um, this is a nasturtium. And we've planted a few nasturtium. We're actually gonna plant more because unfortunately not all of them popped up. But we've got some nasturtiums down here at the base. And uh, nasturtiums are also helpful in keeping out certain pests. Rabbits, from what I'm understanding, do not like the smell of nasturtiums. So if you have a rabbit problem, um, nasturtiums are good. And I'm hoping that once these get bigger and they start to flower, they're gonna keep, help keep these squash bugs off of my squash plant. Um, so far, I'm not seeing any more. I only saw that one this morning. So I am, I'm like, if I can just manually check them from time to time and keep them off until these flower, I think we'll be good. So we shall see on that. I'm starting to see little baby Pumpkins coming in though. This is so exciting. We have a bed at the end of our garden that is more of a permanent perennial type bed. Eventually these will get moved once we build our house and we'll set up more permanent 
beds for perennial gardening. But um, right here at the end, we have a asparagus and strawberry bed. And uh, we gave them a little bit more space than we probably should have because um, from my understanding, looking more into it after the fact is that you can actually basically grow the asparagus, grow the asparagus in the same rows of the strawberries because the asparagus roots go very deep. Now that's not the companions that I am talking about, though they are a companion plant because you can plant them almost on top of each other and uh, save space. They don't take up any of the nutrients from each of the plants because they grow at separate levels in the soil. Sorry, my rooster's crowing behind you guys. But the companion that I am talking about, now anyone who grows strawberries, you half expect whenever you grow strawberries for there to be a problem with rabbits. And so this is a 24 foot long bed. We don't exactly have the means right now to, uh, to build a, a frame to kind of like net it out. And so what we are doing instead is I've taken the initiative to plant marigolds. And uh, I, I said earlier that nasturtiums I've read also keep out rabbits. Um, I might plant some nasturtiums in, but basically I am planning on planting marigolds at the end of each row and then along the outer rows. And basically I plan on continuing to do that throughout the entire garden and planting marigolds at the ends of each rose and then along the outer banks as well and hopefully that will keep out rabbits. Here are our two rows of tomatoes and a common issue, a common pest that people deal with with tomatoes are tomato hornworms. And so, here bud, let's get comfy. And so basically what we are going to be planting is uh, I am planning on planting garlic. Um, garlic is uh, one of those plants that does well with tomatoes. Um, I am planning on planting basil, which is another herb that can help in deter pests. So it's kind of a sacrificial lamb, so to speak. Um, but basically, cabbage hornworms love dill. And so you can grow dill inter, inter so gr dill in with your tomatoes and I'm gonna try and grow dill along the middle row. So I'm gonna have garlic on the outside, basil on the outside, and dill on the inside. And basically in doing that, I'm gonna show the hornworms that they have something else to eat and they'll be more desirable to eat that dill than the tomatoes. I can come in and still pick off the uh, hornworms in the dill, but the dill's gonna kind of attract the hornworms away from my tomatoes and I can get to them in time before they totally destroy the, this, destroy the tomatoes. So I think that's going to be a really good uh, good way to do this and help save our tomatoes because I want to get lots of tomatoes. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? So one of the last plants I'm going to mention today, but it's definitely not the least, there's lots of different companion plants that you can grow and actually if you see any if you have anything that you didn't hear mentioned on this video please leave a comment down below um, giving your input because I'm always learning new uh, things in the garden and if you've got a companion plant that I haven't learned about that keeps pests out I will be happy to hear about it in the comments below but the last plant that we plan on growing and um, I'm not sure yet if it will offer as much resistance to pests, um, to pests, but I believe it does a similar to nasturtiums, is zinnias. And um, the biggest part of the zinnias is that they will attract the good insects, like the pollinators, the butterflies, the bees, things like that, and uh, get them to pollinate our squash and our zucchini and our, our pumpkins and all of that good stuff. And um, But I believe that zinnias, like I said, do similar to the nasturtiums in that they help keep pests out of your garden or deter pests. They, don't, they might not keep pests out, but they might deter pests from landing on your plants. So, like I said, leave a comment down below if you've got any suggestions on companion plants that you did not see listed. And uh, I'd love to hear, I'd love to see those companion plants. <laughs>